Hey, how's it going? What we're doing today is um, timing on uh, my 1992 Miata. I just had the emission test done and I usually bump the timing up 4 or 5 degrees. Um, just for general running, get a little bit more torque at low end. Uh, da, 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 da. But for, uh, for the emission test, you have to make sure your timing's back to stock uh, or else you will pass, uh, fail the emission test. I think it's the uh, hydrocarbon part per million is what's going to be off if your timing is too advanced. Um, I've done it a few times in the past. I've gone and taken my car in and uh, fails the emission test and I just go, damn it, uh, take a 12 mil, uh, loosen the distributor and crank it back a couple degrees, retest it, and it's fine. So I end up paying an extra 30 bucks to get my emission test done and that kind of pisses me off. Um, so uh, da, 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 this year I'm going to make sure it's done. I don't even remember if last year if I put, if I advanced it again. Because I did my mission test near the end of the year. But uh, we're checking the timing now, so we'll find out. Uh, first thing I want to do is start the car, run it to operating temperature, uh, which is basically when the uh, the electric cooling fans kick in, then your temperature is proper. Um, see it down there on the crankshaft. Top of the crankshaft. See where the little white light is? Staying still on my crankshaft? It's the timing mark. I don't know if you can see that because I can't see through the camera if you can see that. You can't see it from the top. you got to come from the front. Anyway, there'll be two marks on there. There'll be a 10, 10 degrees before top dead center, which is where you're supposed to be set at from stock and uh, a T to the right of that. That is the T for top dead center. I usually set it for, after I do my emission test, I set it around 12 to 13 degrees before top dead center. For a timing light, you're gonna need power under the hood. And uh, since the battery's in the trunk, you can get ground under the hood, obviously, anywhere. I just ground right here to the, uh, the cruise control bracket. And then there's a little blue plug under your hood. That'll be a constant power. That'll be a battery source um, that you can use to hook up your uh, timing light to. So the positive for my timing light is hooked up there. Now on your diagnosis connector, you're going to need to um, stop the computer from making trying to correct the timing as you're correcting it or else the computer is just going to take over and keep trying to correct the timing. Um, so what you have to do is ground it out and there's two pins in there. You'll see there's a little diagram. Ten and ground are the two you want to hook together. I'm mean, going to use a paper clip. So if you look on here, you can see ten on the right and the white white thing. Or sorry, a little white square. And then there's ground on another one. So we're going to hook those two together. So we got ground and ten. Okay, and now we're going to read the timing. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this with me. My timing right now is at 13 degrees before, 13, 14 degrees before top dead center, which means I'm going to have to crank it back in order to uh, meet my emission test. So, pretty simple. All you need is a 12 millimeter wrench, which of course I didn't bring out with me. Let's go get one. Look, my garage is almost clean. <laughs> almost. We don't go too far with that. Holy crap. Don't open all the drawers on your toolbox at once. <laughs> Just about had her fall down. That wouldn't have been fun. Okay, so your distributor's on the back of the engine. Right here. It's a 12 millimeter bolt, right back here on the side, and you just have to loosen it so you can rotate the distributor. I'll put this down for one second because I kind of can't really grab this at the same Oh, yeah, I can. No, I can't. Hold on. Stay there.
God, I just detailed my engine a week ago and it's already full of helicopter maple tree seeds. I hate those damn things. Anyway, so now it's loosened and we can rotate the distributor. We're going to rotate it back. Oh, I didn't loosen it quite enough. Here that's obviously advancing when you rotate it before the passenger side, rotating it back. And here the engine slowing down means your timing is. Retarding. You can test it again. So the timing was dialed back to zero. Uh, now we're exactly, I don't know if you can see this, but I can see this, it's at four degrees before top dead center, before top dead center, so we've gone a little too far. You don't need to move your distributor very much, just a couple of degrees is all it takes. So right now we're at nine. I'm going to count the tiniest little bit more for ten. Like, I'll be honestly about half a millimeter. Yeah, let's see what it's doing now. And we're a little over 10. Go back down again. We'll check our. Uh, Okay, now to adjust your uh, idle speed. The idle speed stop screw is under the back. Uh, here's another bitch one to get to. There's an eight millimeter bolt back here under the dash pod under the, uh, there's an eight millimeter nut down there with an Allen key, I think it is a two millimeter Allen key on it. You shouldn't have to adjust your, uh, your idle speed. Generally, even if you're bumping your timing up and down, just as long as your base timing is at around 950 to 1000 RPMs, uh, or sorry, your, uh, when you're on base timing that your idle is 950 to 1000 RPMs, you should be good. When you bump up your timing, the idle speed will go up. You want that. You want to, to leave your idle speed up where the, the timing is bumped to. Um, a lot of people cheat and use the idle air control screw up top have to admit I do too because adjusting the uh, throttle stop screw down there is a royal pain in the ass. So um, anyway, we've got it back down to uh, uh, 10 degrees before top dead center. We've tightened back the 12 millimeter nut back there and then just don't make, forget not to, don't forget to remove the shorting connector from the diagnostic box. And uh, that's about it. Uh, same procedure for uh, bumping your idle, or sorry, bumping your timing up to uh, 12, 14 degrees before top dead center, or bringing it back to uh, base, which is 10 degrees. Uh, probably a different timing setting in different countries, depending. I'm not 100% sure, but in North America, it is 10 degrees before top dead center. Anyway, it's listed up under your hood. So that will always show you what your timing should be up here don't know. It should be in your owner's manual too. Uh, that's about it.